Jesus. And most importantly, the very reason why you are sending forth this word at this particular time. Father, may it be fulfilled in the name of Jesus. To the end that when we leave your presence tonight, we live changed forever. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. We have been doing a series of teaching. And um, I title the, this one, Who Am I? Who am I? When we have understanding of who we are, our perception will be totally different. Our outlook will be totally different. And we begin to get results in our life. Because the Bible says, my people are destroyed because of lack of knowledge. And God wants us to have understanding, to know what he had in mind when he created man. Even after man fell and he decided to restore us, he wants us to know what he had in mind when he was restoring us. Because the restoration that God did in our life is very expensive. And we all know, even as human beings, that when we go about to invest in a venture, we count the cost and we know what we are going to get at the end of it before we do that investment. And the more investments you put in something, the more return you expect. And we know the extent that God went to redeem humankind. That will make us to have an understanding of the, tie, the kind of revenue that God was looking into when he made that investment. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Unfortunately, we as Christians walk around on the earth today not knowing the investment that we carry in us. And because of that, God is saddened. Because we go about as slaves and the enemy oppresses us, takes us as slaves when it's not supposed to be so. And God wants that to change. And it's going to change in the name of Jesus. Because the Bible says that the people that know their God, they shall be strong and they shall do exploits. God wants to raise up people that know who they are and know who their God is in this generation. That we will be strong for ourselves. But... What God is doing is not for ourselves only. The end that we will do exploits in the name of our God. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, the last Thursday, we ended on the notes of uh, us having an understanding that we are citizens of heaven. We are citizens of heaven. And... Um, I try to use the analogy of things that we can relate to, which is um, like and we are in the U.S. right now. America is counted as the greatest nation in the world. When we became citizens of America, how did we feel? How? So how are we feeling now if we really understand that we are citizens of heaven? Because what heaven has for us far much supersedes what America can ever give us. And also we need to know that there is no dual citizenship in heaven. And that's what we want to hammer on this evening. 
because a lot of us are being hindered or being limited because we want to be the citizen of heaven but we want to carry to our citizenship and it is not so because the flesh cannot accomplish the things of the spirit the only thing that the flesh can do is to hinder and when we want to still have our flesh with us and still operate in the spirit the flesh hinders us and puts limitation upon us and god wants to take away that limitation in jesus name Amen. so when jesus christ came to restore us back to god what he gave us is new we talked about that last thursday but i want to talk about it again today because it's very i want us to know what the lord is trying to pass across to us our salvation is new it is new it god did not give us jesus to make us better because most of us live our life like that we come to jesus christ we hold it and we say okay i'm still who i used to be but i want to be better no no that is not the new creation that is not being born again when we come to jesus christ jesus christ is telling us okay this is you die you die because i have something else to give you and then he gives us what he has what he has given us is new so the new life that we have does not have anything to do with the old one and that is the mistake we make you know a lot of people will say you know um uh, i mean i know i've given my life to christ but uh, i still have my life to live no that is not scriptural we don't have that life anymore and as long as we want to hold on to that life to live we cannot fully have that which god is giving us and that is the great hindrance that is hindering the church today that is why we don't have the manifestation of all the promises that god has given us because we hold on to what we had and we want to put what jesus is giving us on top of it the bible says if any man be in christ is a new creature all things are passed away behold some things hallelujah the bible says behold all things are become new but that's not what we are doing we are saying behold some things oh this is what i used to like before this is what i used to know you are new and the old must die I want us to say to ourselves the old me must die the old me must die the old me must die in Jesus name hallelujah so we are not looking onto improvement neither are we looking to get better we are looking for a new a new thing this but as long as we are still holding on to the old we cannot have the full manifestation of the new but god will help us and then one thing i want us to realize in this new thing that god has given us the new that god gave us through jesus christ 
is better than what Adam had. You know, some of us, you know, and I do it sometimes, you know, sometimes when you get frustrated with things of this world, you say, ah, what's even wrong with Adam? You know, and Eve, how could they have lost a, a great opportunity like that? If not, we won't be suffering like this. But I have learned not to ever say that anymore. Because if we go back to the book of Genesis 1, 28, which we read before in our previous lessons. The Bible says that God created man. God blessed them and God said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply. Replenish the earth, subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the air, the, over the fowl of the air, over every living thing that moved upon the earth. So Adam had dominion only here on earth. That's all. But when Jesus Christ came, he did not give us dominion on earth only. He gave us dominion in the heavens and on earth. So thank God that Adam messed up. Because here we are better. So why are we not even living at least the way Adam lived in the garden? If truly what we have now is better. But we need to have that understanding. Because if we have an understanding of the better that we have, we will begin to live differently. Praise the Lord. I want us to read Matthew 28 from 16 to 20. Praise the Lord. We read this scripture also last Thursday, but we're going to go over it again. This story of to his disciples after his death and resurrection. He says, the eleven followed and went to Galilee to the mountain where Jesus had told them that he is designated for them to go. When they saw Jesus, they worshipped him. But some of them did not believe it was really Jesus. I begin to know that when Jesus Christ resurrected and appeared to his disciples, he didn't look anything like he used to look before. If he did, how come some of them doubted him? And then, if he did, how come when Mary saw him, she thought he was the gardener? Right? Because these were people that were living with Jesus day and night before. But when they saw him, they did not know that it was him. And then, we know that also on the way to Emmaus, when he met those two disciples and they were sorrowful. And the Bible says he was discussing with them. All the way to their house, they did not recognize him. That's not what we're preaching about tonight. <laughs> but he had a new body. And the Bible makes us to know that for us too, there will be a change. The only thing that we are still waiting on to change is our body. So why are we still carrying the old man with us? Because that old man is supposed to have died. The only thing that you are permitted to carry with you after you give your life to Jesus Christ is your body. That is the only thing that is still waiting to be changed. But when we come to Christ, we, our personality, our mind, what, what we used to like and all that must die. Because God has given us something better. But sometimes we get afraid. We say, ah, all this enjoyment that I like. How can somebody now tell me to, to, to let it go? There 
there is something better. There is something better. And that is what we are cheating ourselves off because we love this old man so much. Let it be nothing. The flesh profits nothing. It can only hinder us. It can only oppress us. It can only suppress us. It can only prevent us. Let it go. We have held on to it all these years. What have we gained from it? Praise the Lord. Verse 18. Even though some of them doubted him and they didn't believe him, he just continued to say what, what he had to say to them. He said, All power, all authority in heaven and on earth is given to me. There is no other power in heaven and on earth. And he said, Go! In my name. Go in my name. That is what has been given unto you and me. All power. In heaven and on earth. He said go and make disciples. Of all people in the world. Baptize them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Teach them to obey everything that I have taught you. And I will be with you always. Even unto the end of the age. All power in heaven and on earth. Has been given unto us. Is a gift. We learned that last Thursday. We are not trying to work for it. We are not trying to make ourselves better. So we can have it. Somebody paid for it already. If I choose to give you lunch. All you need to go is go to the restaurant and take it. I've already paid for it. Jesus already paid for this. We don't have to pay anymore. And we hear that over and over again, but we really need to understand it. We cannot pay for our sin. That is one. We cannot make our old self better. I want, I want, I want that to ring really over and over in our heart. I want us to say to ourselves. I cannot make my old self better. I cannot make my old self better. We need to take the new. That God has given unto us. The old self has been done away with. You know. Because God himself knew. That the old self has been corrupted. Because God knew that this old self uh, is doomed. That's, that is why the Bible says that the second Adam is a life giver. is a spirit giver. He gives it out. And he gave it to us. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And then we're going to look at John chapter 3 again before we move on. We saw this last Thursday, but I'm going to go over it again. Concerning this new, new thing that God has given to us. This is a very popular scripture. We all know it. It's the story of Nicodemus. Like us, you know, this Jewish religious leader that loved the Lord, you know. He was doing the right thing. He loved to do the right thing. And then suddenly Jesus came along and he said, oh, you know. This Jesus is really from God. Let me go to him and see what I can add to what I have to make myself better. That was what he had in mind when he went to Jesus Christ. From verse 1, he says, After dark one night, a Jewish religious leader named Nicodemus, a member of the sect of the Pharisees, came to an interview with Jesus. And he said, Sir, we all know that God has sent you to teach us. Your miracles are proof enough for this. Jesus did not even allow him to finish what he was going to say. Because Jesus already knew where he was going. He was, he was only affirming Jesus. He said, we know we are, you are from God. He came for a purpose though. To receive something from Jesus Christ. Let's see what Jesus said to him. Jesus Christ said, with all 
the earnestness that I possess. I tell you this. Unless you are born again. Unless you are born again. You can never get into the kingdom of God. What was Jesus trying to tell him? You cannot build upon what you have. And that's what I want us to understand today. Because even though we have had this over and over again. That is what we are still trying to do. We are trying to make ourselves better. We are trying to build upon what we have. From where we are coming from. But Jesus Christ said. Unless you are born again. You can never get into the kingdom of God. Forget about what you had before. Forget about your past goodness. I mean. Pharisee. Religious leader. Wanting to do the right thing. Trying to do the. Jesus said. That one does not count. It doesn't count. And then Nicodemus said, Go and be born again. Jesus replied, What I am telling you so earnestly is this. Unless one is born of water and of the spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. Remember, we are talking about citizenship right now. The citizenship of heaven. Unless a man is born of the water and of the spirit. The old flesh is not permitted. The water and the spirit gives birth to us. So that we can be the citizen of heaven. Praise the Lord. So verse 7 says, So don't be surprised at my statement that you must be born again. And then Jesus Christ went to explain how it happens, which is a mystery. Verse 8, just as you can hear the wind and you cannot tell where it's coming from or where it's going next, so it is with the Spirit. We do not know on whom he will next bestow his life from heaven. Being born again is a miracle and is a gift. And it's something new that is given to a man by the Holy Spirit. And that is why we need to evangelize everybody. Because you don't know who the Spirit is going to go to next. We are not the ones saving them. We are only talking. The Holy Spirit does the work. And he can do it anytime he chooses to. Like we saw in the life of Saul on the way to Damascus. The Spirit met him there. Praise the Lord. We have something new. And I know I'm sounding like a broken record. But I have to. Because that is what the Holy Spirit wants me to keep saying. Because we need to let it sink into us. That when we are born again. Jesus gave us something new. And the old self that we have before must die. We're not trying to build that one up. We're not trying to make it better to present it before God. God already has given us the new life that he wants us to present before him. But what God wants from us is now to get rid of that old man. So that this new man that he has given us can grow in his presence. And do what he wants us to do. Praise the Lord. I want us to read second class. Which is also a popular scripture that we quote all the time. 517. But we need to know and know and know. That this is for real. It says, therefore, if any man be in Christ... He is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold. I want us to underline all. All things are become new. All things are passed away. All things are become new. So, old things are not meant to coexist with the new thing. It's not possible. 
is not possible for the old to coexist with the new. And that is what majority of those that call themselves born again today are doing. We want our old man to coexist with the new man. It does not work like that. The old man cannot be refurbished. The old man cannot be refurbished. There is nothing good in that old man. Even if we refurbish it, it's still the old man. And some of us are walking about refurbished. And that's why we profess a kind of religion but deny the power thereof. But that is going to change. Amen. The old man have already been condemned. The only thing that that old man desires is death. And death, he must die. In the name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. So, knowing this, how are we supposed to live our life? Because that is where we are going. I want us to read Romans 6, 6. He says, knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. Praise the Lord. Galatians 2.20 He says, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ that lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. A old man is crucified. But Paul said, nevertheless, I live. But who is living? The life of Christ that he has given unto us. That is the one that is supposed to live. Because the old man is already crucified. Praise the Lord. Romans 6, 4. He says, therefore, we are buried with him. By baptism into death. That like as Christ was raised up from the dead. By the glory of the father. Even so also. Should walk in newness of life. We are not only dead. We are buried. And I want us to understand the depth of that. I will give an analogy right now. And explain it the way we can relate to it. Let's say somebody dies. Okay? And um, some, somebody that we know. And we all go to the burial. We are there. They put the person in the ground. You know, we see everything. If suddenly you now go back to your house. And that person come knocking on your door. What will you do? <laughs> Thank you. And let's be honest. I'm not going to open the door for that person. Because not only is that person dead, that person is buried. Why do people run for ghosts? Have you ever thought of that? They run when they see a ghost because that person is supposed to have been dead and buried. What do we do? When we see our old man in action. What do we do? Hallelujah. We need to get to that point. 
to get delivered from this old man. Because that is what the devil is using to tie us down. Because the devil knows that as long as that old man is coexisting with their new man, we cannot enjoy the fullness of the new man. We cannot lay cold claim on everything that is, is, is a rightly uh, belongings as citizens of heaven. But you know, that old man already has been cried, already has been buried. Let us consider him buried and dead. When we consider him buried and dead, not only God, because sometimes God considered him buried and dead for us, we still consider him living. Because if we don't consider him living, why do we open the door for him when he comes knocking? Let us treat that old man the way we treat dead people. We run from them. We don't give them audience. We don't, you don't even allow them to talk to, if you see someone that you know has been dead and buried, will you talk to the person? We will not talk to them. Talk less of even trying to know what they are trying to tell you. That is how we need to deal with our old man. When the old man come knocking, we don't open the door. Because this old man is supposed to be dead. And is supposed to be buried. What business do we have with, with the dead? What business do we have with the person that has already been buried? They are contaminants. We are living. And we need to continue to live. Praise the Lord. So that little analogy should help us. When we start to look at who we are now. And what we need to do with our old man. So, we know that we cannot live with the two. One of them must die. And that is the old man. If we do not deal with our old man, it will contaminate the new one. And then, the aim of that old man is to eventually kill the new man. Little by little. Little by little, God forbid that we should lose the gifts of God for us through Jesus Christ. The old man must die. Praise the Lord. So we have a part to play in it. That's where I'm going by the little analogy that I gave. God already, is, the old man is already crucified with Christ and buried with him. Now that we are resurrected, when we put him where he belongs, he cannot have power over us. Let us stop giving the old man audience. Praise the Lord. Praise Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Galatians 5.24 We need to reinforce that which has been done. 5.24 And they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affliction and the loss thereof. They that have Christ have crucified the flesh with the affection and the laws thereof. We cannot desire what the old man used to desire anymore. When that thought is coming to us, we need to tell the old man, look, you are dead. You Shut your mouth. Because if the dead is trying to talk to me, I will not listen. So why are we listening to our old man? 
Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Romans 6 2. It says, God forbid, how shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? We are dead to sin. We cannot live in sin. The new man, the new thing that Jesus Christ gives us by the Holy Spirit cannot sin. What sins is the old man? And if somebody is dead, that person cannot sin. So, if our old man is still causing us to sin, the old man is still showing up alive in our life. And we have to deal with it. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I want us to open our Bible to Colossians chapter 3. Mm -hmm. From verse 1. He says, if ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ seated on the right hand of God. Set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth. Remember, we are citizens of heaven. We are citizens of heaven. If we want to enjoy the things that is in that kingdom, we have to abide in the kingdom. Just like America is. You know, even those people that American grant citizen, like when you get your green card, they will tell you, you have to spend this amount of of uh, months here before you can be considered if somebody wins green card and they say well i want to be an american and they come here and stay one day and go back home and then they come and stay one day they will not get it they will not get it the same thing for us to enjoy the benefits of heaven we need to be present. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I continue to read the same verse. Set your affection on things that are above, not on things that are on earth. We cannot set our affection on earthly things. And expect to enjoy the things of the kingdom. The spirit that we have received, which Jesus Christ has given us, is not the spirit of this world. So we need to set our mind on things that are above. Now, see what verse 3 says, because it's the situation is. It says, For ye are dead. Ye are dead. And your life is hid with Christ in God. That is, the old self is dead. The new man is the one that is hid with Christ in God. We need to know who we are. Because if we know who we are, we begin to act accordingly. Why is it that we live our life as if everything begins here 
and ends here. And it is not so. All these beautiful things that we see today, one day they will be no more. They will be no more. But that spirit that has been given unto us through Jesus Christ abides forever. And that is who we are. We are not trying to be it. That is who we are. Most of us, we define ourselves with our old nature. We define ourselves with our old nature and then we say, well, but I'm born again. No. We need to start to define ourselves by our new nature. We are born again. That is who we are. We have the spirit of God in us. We have the spirit of Christ in us. The Bible says, you are hid with Christ in God. That is who you are. That is what I am. But the person that we are defining ourselves with is supposed to be dead. We are dead. Praise the Lord. And let's see verse 4. It says, when Christ who is our life shall appear, then shall ye also appear with him in his glory. When Christ who is our life when Christ who is alive, when Christ who is alive, that's not a mistake. That is the truth. Christ is alive. See, the life that we are living now is, is Jesus Christ's life that he gave to us. It doesn't belong to us. We cannot live it the way we want. Is Christ's life. That was why Paul was saying, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. But the life that I'm living now, I live by the faith of the Son of God. And we need to really know that. You know, when the Bible was given the parable, He says, except the corn of wheat fall into the ground and die. It abides alone. He said, but when that wheat falls into the ground and die, then it brings forth many. That is what the Bible is trying to say. Jesus Christ died. But when Jesus Christ rose, he now multiplied himself and started giving himself out. That's why Jesus said, I'm the bread of life. And that's why when Jesus preached to, the, to those people following him, the Bible says many of them left him because they could, it was too much for them to handle. Jesus is the bread of life, broken for all of us. I have, he gave me part of him. He gave it to you. He gave it to you. He gave it to you. That's why the Bible says we are one. You know the, do you know the reason why there is no unity in the body of Christ? Do you know? Because people are still going about with their dead body. Old self. In the body of Christ. How can your old self and my old self and his old self and he, how can he be in unity? It's not possible. But our new man that Jesus Christ gave to you and gave to me and gave to you and you is the same. Why will we not be in unity? We don't need to strive for unity. If we are all Truly, with Christ in God, we don't need to strive for unity because it is one spirit. And that's why the Bible says one spirit, one Lord, one baptism. Praise the Lord. The old man must die. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. I don't going to go back to the same. So when Christ, who is our life, because that's the life now, is Christ. And when anything outside that is trying to raise up his head, we shut the door against it. You don't belong here anymore. You don't live here anymore. You are dead. This is the new me. As to us trying to say, oh, this is me. How can I change? God, please come and change me. That's how we, we, we deal with that old man. No, that old man is not you. He's not you anymore. He's dead. The you now is Christ. The life of Christ that has been given unto you, the new man. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Praise the Lord. When we begin to approach God in that perspective, we will start to see changes in our life. Not only will it change the way we approach God, it will change the way that we deal with ourselves. Because you will not fall into sin and fall out of sin anymore. Because it is not you. Christ cannot sin. And if my new man is Christ, that new man I know is not sinning. So the thing that wants me to sin is the old man. And the old man is dead and crucified. And is not allowed in. Praise the Lord. Now let's see verse 5. He said, knowing that, having, you know, it's Paul that is talking here. Having this understanding that you are in, he, you are with Christ hid in God. And knowing that when Christ who is your life shall appear, you also will appear in his glory. He said, therefore, mortify therefore your members which are upon the earth. And he started to list them. For which things sake the wrath of God cometh on the children of disobedience. Now look at verse 7. In which ye also walked some time when ye lived in them. When was that? When we were in the flesh. When the old man was not dead yet. You see? Now look at verse 6. He said, but now ye also put off, off, put off the old man. Anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, fill the communication out of your mouth. All this is not the spirit of Christ. It's not the new man. This is not what Christ gave us. We carried this in our old man from Adam. But thank God, the Bible says he's dead. We cannot entertain that. Praise the Lord. Then he said, lie not one to another. Seeing that ye have put off, what? The old man with his deeds. We have put off the old man with his deeds. So we know our identity. Our identity is Christ. When we say we are born again, please let us understand what we're trying to say. We're trying to say that we have a new identity. We're trying to say that the life that we're living right now does not belong to us. It is the life of Christ. He gave it to us. We didn't work for it. He paid the price by dying. He multiplied himself and he divided himself to each of us. And we're supposed to live by that life. And we're supposed to define ourselves by that life. We are not who we used to be. We are not who we used to be. And we don't want to continue to follow to be that person. So when we think about our character and our way of life, we think about Christ. Because that is what we have right now. 
Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Now look at verse 10. It says, And have put on the new man. That is the man, Christ, which is renewed in the knowledge after the image of him that created him. That is who we are. We are different. We are citizens of heaven. We are different from other human beings that are walking on the face of the earth. We might still look the same physically, but we are different. Because the last thing that we change is our body. But something has changed in us. Something has changed in us. The new man which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him. Christ. Praise the Lord. Now I want you to look at verse 11. And that's what I was talking about when I was talking about unity. He says, where there is neither Greek nor Jew, circumcision nor uncircumcision, barbarian, Scythians, bond nor free. But what? But what? And in all. Do we now understand who we are? We are Christ. We are Christ. That's who we are. That's the life that we carry right now. He gave it to us. Christ is all and in all. The same Christ that is in me is the same Christ that is in you. Is the same Christ that is in my husband. Is the same Christ that is in my brother. The same Christ. There is no difference. There is no difference. This is who we are. This is our identity. Our old man is done away with. Our personality is done away with. The Adamic nature is done away with. We have something new. Not refurbished. Not something that is going to be made better. When Christ gave it to us, he was perfect. Christ himself. In me, in you, in all of us. That is why the Bible says we are one body. We are one body. There is no clashes of DNA. We were born with the same DNA. Christ. And that is why we can coexist. There is division in the body because people are going about not, they are not Christ's. They are still themselves. And when they come together as a group, each person clashes with the other one. But when we put on the new man and we live the life of Christ, we will automatically walk in unity. Just like the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. They don't have to work at it. They are the same. The same God. The same Jesus Christ. The same Holy Spirit. They are the same. And it's the same Christ that we have in us. Citizens of heaven. Praise the Lord. And then he went on to say, Put on therefore as the elect of God, holy and beloved, bowels of mercy. Kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness. Is that not what we, we, we get from Christ? That's the nature of our new man. We, we are not trying to, to, to work it out in our old man. I'm not trying to make my old man merciful or kind or humble or meek. It's the new man that has been given unto me. That can do this by the Spirit. He says, but for bearing one another... Forgiving one another. If any man quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, also ye do ye. And above all this, put on charity, which is the bond of perfection. Who can love without the Spirit of Christ? 
Nobody. The perfect love, the agape love, can only be done by the Spirit of Christ. Our old man cannot love. The only kind of love that can be demonstrated by the old man is the love of give and take. What is in it for me? That's the old man. But the life of Christ loves. Not expecting anything in return. Praise the Lord. Let the peace of God rule in your heart. To the which also ye are called. In one body. In one body. We are one. And. Like my brother always say. Which is the truth. We cannot do without one another. That's how God made it. Just like the father. Cannot do without the son. The son cannot do without the spirit. We cannot do without one another. And that's why the devil is using that strategy to prevent the body of Christ. The body of Christ is powerless because there is no unity. We cannot come together. Everybody is still caring about their old man. This is who I am. Yeah, that is who I am. Everybody bragging. But that old man is men. He has already been crucified and buried. Have you ever seen somebody carrying a dead corpse? And it is well with that person. Do you know how heavy they get? So when we carry that kind of load and we are going about our earthly business. How far can we run? How far? What can we achieve with that kind of burden on us? Let's put it aside. It does not benefit us. It prevents us. It contaminates us. It slows us down. It weighs us down. Let's have something better. Praise the Lord. That's why the Bible says, He that loses his life shall gain it. But he that gains his life shall do what? Yes. So when we see, when we carry about this old man that we don't want to let go, we end up losing the new man that God has given unto us. God forbid. God forbid that we lose this new man. Let go of the old man. Praise the Lord. Verse 16, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, in all wisdom, teaching, admonishing one another in psalm and hymns, spiritual songs, singing with grace in your heart to the Lord. And whatsoever ye do in word and deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by him. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So, the summary of what the Lord is passing across to us tonight is we are Christ's. When that corn of wheat died, He multiplied himself. The last Adam is the spirit giver. And he gave it freely. He gave it freely. He gave it to us. He gave it to us. That is the new man. And the Bible says if any man be in Christ is a new creature. All things are passed away. So let's start to see ourselves in a different perspective. We are a new creation. And the life that we are living now is not the uh, Adamic life anymore. It's the life of Christ. We are crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, we live. The life we live is by faith of the Son of God. And because of that, we know we are different. We are not trying to be righteous. We are righteous. 
is imputed upon us, is given unto us. We have the nature of God. Christ. That is who we are. Citizens of heaven. And because we are citizens of heaven, we thinking about that kingdom. We cannot sneak in and sneak out. We cannot spend our life on this earth as, we, as if we belong here. Very important. Because when we have this new life, we need to realize we are babies. The baby must grow. And the baby does not grow on earthly things. It still grows on the food of the kingdom, spiritual food. We need time for that. We need time. We need to devote time to the kingdom of God. The Bible says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Every other thing shall be added unto you. All the beauty of this world, all the riches of this world, God has it. He's the one that created it. So let us run after God. If we run after God, we will have it. He created them. We are new creatures. I want us to say it. I am a new creature. I am a new creature. The old me is crucified with Christ. The old me is dead. The old me is buried. The new me is Christ given to me freely. And I choose to live the new man. If anyone be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. I am a new man in Christ Jesus. I walk in it. I live in it. I desire it. I follow hard after it. In the name of Jesus. And so shall it be in the name of Jesus. So having this understanding, what manner of man are we supposed to be? What manner of man? That is the question that we have in our heart as we live today. That's our own work. Write it down. Having this understanding, what manner of man am I supposed to be? Hallelujah. We keep building on this. Now that we have an understanding who we are, we now we know how we need to conduct ourselves and what is expected of us of new life. Why did he give it to us? He gave us for a purpose and that purpose must be accomplished. In Jesus' name. I want us to rise up and pray.